Batman, 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 Joker just put me on acid. <laughs> you wanna wait like a maverick, we need to make something happen. Hey guys, so it's uh, the exact same day, just like five minutes after I made uh, yesterday's video. I felt since I was gonna be studying uh, tomorrow, I might as well just make the video right now. And uh, I guess I wanna talk about uh, my first encounter with anxiety in this video. Yeah. Um, it's still very fresh in my memory, so I grew up with, um, you know, a bunch of my cousins and some family friends. Uh, there was this particular guy, let's call him Kay, he, he was my close friend and we sort of grew up together and our families were close. Um, I'm talking like really, we're really young, we're really, really young and I liked him but not in like the sense of like, I like him, I want to date him, it was just more like well, I really like him as a person. I really uh, want to be close to him, you know, as friends. So we were, I guess, just that. And then um, we got into high school uh, together. We went to the same high school uh, for the beginning, at least. And I, I mean, we're getting older and my feelings started to grow bigger and bigger. And I still like didn't want to date him or any of that stuff. You know, I was too young to even comprehend what it was like to date. like. All I was thinking about was, uh, you know, friendship. I didn't even think about, you know, holding hands. That was like too much for me. Holding hands was way too much for me. I I just knew that I had this deep, deep, deep sense of unconditional love for him. You know, it, it was love. It wasn't just like, I really did care for him. And it was so, so, so strong, pure, and deep. There was nothing else to it. I never knew a time where I didn't feel that way about him. Like, I never decided. I, it's always, I've always felt that way, you know, growing up. So, you know, we're in school together, and I was, like, the youngest in school. I was about nine years old, and everyone was older. And, you know, I was still kind of uh, getting into life and seeing how things work being in high school was a whole new experience for me and you know i did i did a lot of things for him coming from a place of of love and not much of an understanding you know i just kind of did things by instinct like i would want to help him out uh, with his homework and always make sure that he's doing fine and you know i would always check up on him and i would always go to watch him play soccer because um he he had asthma and uh, when he got really bad, he needed his inhaler and he needed someone. And I just always wanted to be there uh, when I could. And also, uh, when he got really sick, he would get sick a lot. I would call my mom to come and take us home to my house. And so he could, he could rest and he could feel better. I didn't want anything from him. I just, I just wanted us to be friends like we've always been, you know? and I was there for him. I really feel like I, I gave my everything and anything. He was the one person that I put in front of me uh, before myself, before my family, um, before anyone. I've, n I've never seen anything like it. I had no control over it and I had no choice, uh, decision in, in anything that happened and the way I felt. It's just the way things were. It's like, I felt, I really do feel like I was like born that way, you know? I just think I kind of always had that. <sighs> I don't want to make this video too long, so let's cut to the chase. So I kind of just did everything and anything um, for him until we started to get a little older and, and he started to change. I, I know people change, but um, this was more he was being uh, a mean to me, you know, kind of giving me the cold shoulder. And, you know, he wouldn't want to call me his friend i guess i don't know maybe he wasn't happy uh letting people know i was his friend or anything like i don't know what the issue was to be honest um i just know that when we had breaks the first thing i would want to do is get a plane ticket and go over to where he lived because he didn't live in the same state as me so i would always go home get a plane ticket i was like 12 uh <laughs> 13, 14, um, I would get on the plane myself and go over and stay with him. And you could call that stalking or whatever, but I didn't know, you know, I, I didn't see anything bad there. You know, I just wanted to go visit and I would always go stay in his place and always get a plane ticket. Every single time we're on break, I would always, 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 always just travel over there. And that was my life, you know, for me, he, he was my life. And I didn't really understand it. I really didn't understand it. Everything I did was just instinct and impulse. 
and you know um eventually when we got to higher um more senior high school we we split um i changed schools and he did as well and that was fine i guess you know some distance uh, just makes you want to see the person more and i did as much as i could to keep in touch but you know i guess it was pretty normal looking from the outside perspective you know from someone else's perspective you could just say um it's just a story of how you know girl likes boy boy doesn't like girl and that's just it right and i i guess that was really just it you know but being the girl sucks uh it sucked because at some point i <laughs> I was losing my mind over everything that was going on I said I never chose this I, I never chose to have these feelings I never wanted this to, to happen you know I, I I never chose to love him the way I did trust me it was it was it was pure love of friendship that was just it that was that was why it was so hard for me um, to understand why he couldn't just you know give me a fraction of that back as much as I put like my everything into our friendship it was like a one-sided thing you know it, to, to ever, i would tell people that oh, it was my best friend but I, I wasn't his but anyway i don't know at some point it might have become more than just maybe me wanting him to be my best friend i don't know how that really went with me but i know that when i became 16 it was just too much for me to handle anymore um, you know, the feelings I couldn't explain, things that I didn't understand, it was too much for me, so much going on, and um, my really close friend at the time advised me that maybe I should just tell him how I feel and see what he says. I thought about it for the longest time, you know, because, you know, most nights I would be up crying and just devastated about a lot of things. A lot of nights I, I was just like devastated and... I just didn't understand a lot of things and I would cry and cry over the way that I was being treated and I wanted him to treat me like I was special because I was I deserved it you know after everything that I did for him I felt that I, I at least deserved you know for for him to call me his close friend at least you know um, but you know he, he was my everything he was my happiness uh, you know it was, it was a part of me and I, I summon up the courage, all the courage in the world because I'm a really shy person, I've always been. Um, it's better now, but I was really, really shy back then. Um, I didn't even want to tell friends or anyone how I felt because, you know, it was embarrassing. Why, why would I feel like that? You know, I told him everything. I said uh, all these years uh, I felt this uh, connection and this like love for you and all I ever wanted it was for you to, to be my friend, um, to, to treat me as your friend, and to call me that, that's all I ever wanted from you, nothing else, nothing more, I, I didn't want to date you or any of that stuff, I didn't want you to like me, I didn't expect that from you, I just wanted you to be my friend and after expressing my everything, my feelings, I don't know what I expected, you know, I expected maybe you'd be like, oh, maybe, oh, I didn't notice how you felt and um, I'm sorry or whatever, you know. <laughs> Maybe a tiny, tiny fraction of me wanted him to, to say that, oh, oh he really did um, like being friends with me or whatever, but he told me, uh, you, and uh, I guess that's when my world really just, uh, just been 360, you know? I don't think it was really much of what he said, but it was the, the, the process that I've gone through for the entire 16 years for it to have this abrupt ending and at that moment, it was like he was cut off from my life and he was gone that was that was it that was the end <laughs> uh that was the end of everything and i broke down basically 16 year old i didn't know anything i, I broke down and for me um i'm just 19 you know i feel i spent 16 years hung up on someone and kind of tangled in in this person and having this person a part of your life when you cut that part um away it's like you're missing this big piece of you and um it, that's what it was like for me i went into this cold dark place um for a few months um yeah i i would wake up and i couldn't breathe 
I felt physical pain. I didn't know anxiety could be physical. Uh, I heard that anxiety is more of like in your head, but you know, my mind was with me because <laughs> I couldn't breathe, you know? Every day I wake up and I couldn't breathe and I was afraid. Um, I was afraid that I would just like die. <laughs> You know, it's just my mind playing tricks on me. It's okay. I was so afraid, like I, I was, I would choke and choke and roll, and no one was there. And I didn't ever tell my parents, and I didn't ever tell my friends. I didn't ever tell anyone. <laughs> but anyway, there's more to this story, but I'm gonna tell it another day. That was my first en encounter with anxiety and it was so much pain I've, I've never felt so much pain i i didn't know why <laughs> i don't get why it hurt that much it was i didn't know pain like emotional pain could be physical that was where i really clicked and i woke up that was where like i woke up into the world it was like i was living in this dream fantasy land for the longest time and i finally opened my eyes <sighs> But that's just a, a fraction of of why I felt that way. But to sum it all up, I went through 16 years of feeling a sense of you know rejection and not being wanted around and all that stuff. And when he just confirmed everything that I was thinking in my mind already, you know, it just I felt like it just kind of got ingrained into my brain that well you're not good enough, you know, if you're not good enough for him, then you're not good enough for for anyone. Anyway, I, I don't really share this with people. I haven't really shared this with, with people. So um, I, I'm doing that <laughs> my channel right now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you for watching. If you actually sat through the entire thing, um, I will at some point make a, another part of this. Um, explain further what happened after that, the aftermath. But you know, today I still struggle with anxiety and just a lot of things but we'll get into that anyway um if you're new here my name is ama do subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video mama told me it won't be easy so i bow my head and pray